Thanks for joining us today from sunny Colorado. Uh, actually, we are gonna do a barbecue episode for you today, but we've decided to improvise a little bit and pivot to a nice Indian curry dish. We're gonna make lamb Rogan Josh and accompanied by a chicken biryani. Uh, just a nice comfort food. So we should get in the kitchen and get started. All right, here we are back in the kitchen for another episode of Dairy Free Cooking. Today, we're gonna do something a little different. Um, we're gonna do some Asian flavors. We're gonna start with some Indian cuisine. And one of the things is, people always tell you to peel the ginger with a spoon. Um, so I find that really painful, actually. So I just trim it up best I can. Um, this is pretty small ginger, so this even uh, is a little bit more difficult to get all the stuff off, but um, I couldn't imagine trying to do this with a spoon. And what I do with all these ginger trimmings is I use them in the stock. You can use them in a chai, tea, you can use them in any kind of tea, honestly. Um, and I will use them as the base for some other cooking that I'll be doing on these shows. So said, we'll just get in there, do this real fast. In every cuisine, there seems to be um, a three-part staple that all food starts with. And in French cooking, that's called the mirepoix. That's onions, carrots, and celery. Um, in Indian cooking, it's actually ginger, garlic, and chili. And then in Cajun cooking, it is onions, celery, and green pepper, obviously. Um, most every other cuisine has garlic in it as well. And so, especially maybe Italian cuisine, also use the traditional mirepoix generally. So let's just get through this real quick so we can get onto the fun stuff. It's important to have everything ready, everything in its place. Also French term, mise en place. And it makes your cooking just a lot more. You'll see a lot of people, home cooks especially, amateur cooks, they're always complaining that they burnt stuff. They always seem to be in a rush. Um, and part of that problem is, is that they don't have everything ready. So they, they think that you can chop the onions while something else is going on, or you can get your steak ready, but really you should have everything done. So before I go and turn on the pots, I just want to get a couple steps done. You can see I've already prepared some garlic. I've prepared our onions today. I would like to, this dish, uh, lamb rogan josh which i did some studying and uh, they think that it's some people think it's an interpretation of an original different words and pronunciations um, it's a, a traditional staple of the kashmiri region of india and it is it's one of the favorite uh, curry dishes that i've ever heard of every time you mention it to anyone who likes indian food um, they definitely know of lamb rogan josh the other words I believe are Rogan ghost or ghost. It's like a, and Rogan means oil and ghost means fiery or even passionate. So I think the fiery comes from that usually the color for this dish is made from uh, cashmere chilies, which we don't have. And as a home cook, you can't find a lot of things. Also, it's got garam masala in it, which you can't always find in the grocery store. So I have some that I've purchased, but I also have a little spice blend here that I want to show you and how you could make your own garam masala, or um, you can make a version of it with uh, curry powder as well. So we're almost done here. And again, you don't need to get everything off. You just want most of it. Um, not because there's any bad flavors in the skin. It's just maybe not as pleasant on your palate. So. Something else important about ginger, and as I said, it's really good in the stock. We've got some stock working back here for our dish today. It's nice to have a ginger stock just floating around. You can use a ginger stock for uh, Thai curries, Indian dishes. It's really nice. Now I'm going to puree this ginger, chop it for first, but if you put it in, in a blender or food processor, 
The grains on ginger run the long way. And if you just put it in there, it will cut it and it will just be really stringy. So with your knife, you just cut it. And that's the same case for any rhizome, a turmeric, ginger. You just want to cut against those strings. If you look closely, sometimes when you chop them, you can see just little fibers hanging off. And that's less pleasant than even just the skin. It's having those strings in your mouth when you're eating them on your palate. So we'll get started. I'm gonna use some of this ginger for some other recipes as well. So for starters, I'm just gonna get it in the blender. I find that in Thai cooking or Chinese cooking, it's nice to have little bits of ginger, but everything I've seen in Indian cooking, it's better to have it nice and smooth. So as I said, I'm gonna do some other recipes later and so I'm going to take some of this ginger and I'm going to set it aside. I think that's enough ginger for this lamb dish that we're making because I want it nice and smooth like a paste. You'll see a lot of uh, Indian recipes call for a ginger paste. So what I will do is I'll take the chilies and you can pick your heat. You can use a poblano pepper, um, an Anaheim which is very, really, really mild. I'm going to use paprika for the color because I don't have cashmere chilies, which have a little spice to them. So I'm going to bring up my heat by using jalapenos. Um, I think most, I've had a lot of Indian clients. I did a lot of cooking with them. Really amazing the things that they taught me. And uh, with that, they always liked it a little spicy. You can also just check how spicy your jalapeno is. The spice is around the seeds. So it's actually a pretty mild jalapeno. You'd know pretty fast if it was hot. So, and a little more flavors, maybe a little better. Grab our handy dandy kitchen scraper. It's really one of my favorite tools. You'll see me keep it using it throughout. Get that in there. We also want our garlic in the paste. And I'll show you how this comes out. Probably about 30 seconds, you can keep an eye on it. I said, probably gonna have to scrape it down. And it doesn't quite want to go to a paste. It's just really finely chopped. Um, if you do really want to get it into a paste, you can add a little oil to it. And the oil will help catch it all. You can hear it in there and it already looks way different. And I'll pull this out in one second and we'll have the base, basically what I would call an Indian mirepoix. Let me grab a bowl to put this in. Okay. You can see we've got a nice smoothish little bits in there, but I think that will cook out to smooth and again, if your friends are criticizing your cooking, just stop cooking for them. That's how I always figure it. But no one does, honestly. I, I think everyone's always happy to receive a meal. I think one of the funny things is, as many chefs I know, we eat leftovers, we eat cold food, we eat food over the garbage can. I had a, a bologna fetish for a while. I was eating all kinds of bolognese from, from custom-made ones to Oscar Myers, pre-sliced in the package. I always liked a good bologna sandwich. I've seen some artisan bolognese come out now because it is really a wonderful, wonderful sandwich meat, deli meat. People are always afraid to cook for the chef. They're like, what would I make for you? I'd be embarrassed or whatever. And please don't. Anyone who cooks for a living totally wants whatever you're making. And if you're, if they come over and you're like, hey, I made you something, and you hand them a bologna sandwich, I bet they light up like a Christmas tree. Everyone will be psyched. I know I would. Um, maybe they're a vegetarian, but I think they even make like a, I think they even make a vegan bologna now. So. Or they make something that looks like bologna. Maybe they call it turkey, but um, yeah. So next, let's get to our lamb. This is a leg of lamb. This recipe usually calls for shoulder. Sometimes I guess uh, people like the marbling a little better. You can get blade chops and stuff and there's bones in there and they're hard to trim. This is a really easy thing to work with. You can get a boneless leg of lamb at most grocery stores, Costco. Um, you can get them frozen or not. I pull off the netting sometimes and save it. 
because even if I'm roasting a leg of lamb, I always take it off and then chop it up uh, in the inside like any, any connective tissues and then I put the net back on it for roasting. But for today, since we want cubes, we're going to open this thing up. This is a really nice, nice, pretty piece of meat. Um, I don't even see where they got the bone out. It must have been on this side. So first thing I'll do is you can tell how fat, how thick the fat is by how tough it is. Um, when you're trimming barbecue and stuff, it's hard to tell on the top of the brisket how thick the fat is. You can always tell just by pushing it. See how soft that is? Very thin. You can feel a little more resistance. Over here it's really thick, so I, I know I just don't want that. And I'm just going to pull those pieces off. The rest of the stuff is okay for the most part. And then with all this silver skin, you can, if you don't want to trim it, it's very hard. You should have a sharp knife. Let's say you don't really, and you're like, don't want to waste any meat by just trying to, because I'll show you as a chef, you just get under the silver skin and then you follow it down and you can pull that off. Now, you might not have that time or that skill or the knife to do that. So I call it pre-chewing. The silver skin runs in these directions. So I just poke it a couple times to break it up. You can do this with any meat, beef, pork, anywhere where you see a lot of connective tissue in a whole muscle like this, you can just break some of those connections. And that's what I was saying that I do when I roast a leg of lamb is I will just, break up some of those connections so when I roast it and slice it, nobody gets that big piece of gristle in their mouth. And I just call this pre-chewing. Weird term, but it's the best thing I could come up with. Um, all right, so we're good to go. We're just gonna put this in big, like one inch cubes, one half inch cubes. Again, if I see anything, just like this, maybe even bigger than that, because when you're braising meat like we're going to do with this dish, they're going to shrink considerably. And if you've been to an Indian restaurant, you want that nice big piece of meat. One of the reasons for that is if you make it too small, it really loses texture. It can dry out easily. But the other thing you want is you want them to be fairly uniform so they cook the same. Like that's a really nice piece. And when I cook in the kitchen or train people, I'll come by if they want an example. Um, and I'll cut a piece off and I'll say, keep that on your board. And just as a little reminder of what size that you want. So here we go. There were many cuisines growing up. Um, every time I had one, because I grew up pretty basic. And uh, as I said before, with my mom doing a lot of the cooking and she was really good, but she wasn't adventurous. A lot of Betty Crocker stuff, which I think was pretty amazing. Some of those recipes for people and they were easy and fast and simple. And my, my parents were really busy people. They worked a lot. We had a pretty basic upbringing. So as I tried Chinese food or Indian food, I was just blown away. I didn't know there was so much out there. And actually, we even had some of those spices in the house. So I was able to play with different things. Um, and that's something I'll show you today. As I said, there's a garam masala. You can't always get it. Um, we can use a curry powder with a little cumin, a little coriander, turmeric, paprika, and you can kind of get there, cinnamon. But what I've done here is um, made a little spice blend so you can see what actually goes in there. Okay, here we are ready to get started. So, as I said, I had some garam masala, but um, sometimes it can be hard to find. So I wanted to show you what was in it. As I said, you could add some ingredients to the curry powder to make it. So what we have is cardamom pods. We have coriander and cumin and star anise. Some cloves. These are also not a good texture thing. So I've already cracked the seeds out, which are these little black things. We have a few things you can put nutmeg in there, also cinnamon um, and bay leaves that some people grind up in there, but I prefer just to leave it out, which with a little black pepper. And then we're just gonna buzz it up. 
I don't know why, but I always feel like it helps to shake it a little. So we look in there, and there's still quite a bit of texture to it, so. Great. The best way is to knock it out upside down, and then we'll put it in there. And as I said, um, some grinders work better than others. Most people would use a mortar and pestle, but if there's a few little bits in there, I don't think that uh, it's gonna harm anything. Mm. So here's a store-bought one. Eh. Here's the fresh one. Oh, it smells amazing. A much, much bigger difference. I think it will really work in the end. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get our heat on and get ready to sear. We'll start with toasting our spices. We'll throw our beef in right away, start to sear it. Then we'll add our trilogy, fire everything else, onions in there, and uh, get rolling on this recipe. Might add the spices with the beef or after the beef browns or sears, but uh, to really get the aromatics out, um, I like to toast the spices. We're in a little dry spice. Get our other things in there. And if you crack the bay leaf just a little, it helps release some of the oils. So we're gonna get our lamb in here uh, right after our spices are toasting. And you can see there's some smoke coming off them. And if you put whew, instantly, like 10 times more fragrant. So I'm gonna get the oil in there. You can hear that sizzle away. Another thing people do, you're not gonna be able to brown all sides of the lamb in a home kitchen. I'll pick up the cinnamon off the bottom so I have more room for the lamb. The best chance you have before the lamb starts dropping its juices is to sear one side. So people will keep stirring and they won't ever really get the lamb browned. I'm just gonna let it sit there and develop some of that caramelization on the meat to get some of that flavor. Then we have our wonderful trilogy. I'm gonna grab some tomato while we're going. Because this is dairy-free cooking, uh, a lot of Indian recipes finish with yogurt or cream, but I use a coconut milk. We also have coconut cream, but I'm gonna use that for another application. I don't like to salt the lamb right away because it will add in getting the moisture to come out of it. So I'm just gonna try to sear it the best I can. Now we're gonna let it just go again. This is a great tool to have. I was in Italy once with my daughter and we had walked just 10, 20 miles a day. I'm not exaggerating. And one day she was really tired, it was the end of the day. And I was like, I want a spoon holder from the Amalfi Coast. So we kept walking and every gift shop had ones you could tell they weren't made in Italy, they weren't by local potters or whatever. And every time I asked her if she liked one, after about doing this for about an hour, she was like, yeah, that one's good. Yeah, that one's good. And I was like, no, we have to go further. I know there's another one. And so I honestly, she was at her breaking point, like tears. Like, I don't want to walk any further. And I was like, one more store. And we walked in and found this wonderful spoon holder, hand signed by where it was made, um, right in Elmalfi. To this day, she's like, it was worth it. It's a beautiful spoon holder. And she constantly is on the search. She lives in Washington, D.C. And she's constantly on the search for the perfect spoon holder. And I said, you got to earn it. These things, I remember, uh, in my neighborhood before everything was imported and all over the world and mass produced at different places. Um, in my neighborhood, the Italian women that I grew up with had spoon holders and they were so proud of them. They were just, they're coveted. And I am super gentle with this one because I'm probably never gonna make it back there, at least not anytime soon. So I don't let people touch it. I put it in the dishwasher away from other things. I bring it back or I wash it by hand. When I wash it by hand, I never hold it. I always set it down and I'm super careful with it because it is, it's a prized possession and it was the most wonderful trip with my daughter. And um, it reminds me every day of what a great time we had. So I'm, I covet it. The lamb looks great. 
I'll show you if you could see it there. It's getting a little brown. Now I'm going to go in with our onions. And they're going to cook down. There's not many vegetables in this dish. Maybe I'm using a little too many onions. Maybe I won't quite use them all. I'm going to do our trilogy. About a couple spoons of that. As I said, I want to make you a couple dishes today, so I'm going to save a little of each. And then, and this dish is pretty much ready to go. You can add, whoa, don't set your towel on fire. That could happen. You can hear the heat come right out of the pan when I add all that stuff. So I'm glad we got to brown the beef. Our wonderful spoon holder. Now I'm just going to bomb everything in there. I'm just going to put the tomato sauce. It calls for tomato puree. This is all I could get. I like using organic things when possible. People have different opinions on it. You cook with what you want um, and things you like. I encourage you though to try different things like canned coconut, canned tomatoes. They really are wildly different. And some people don't believe me. And same with organic produce and conventional produce. I've had a lot of people argue with me. So I just give them a blind taste test right out of the can. I'll take a little bit of coconut milk and put it in a bowl and another brand and put it in a bowl with a spoon and have them taste it. And they'll be like, yep, it's crazy different. Um, and same with tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes are night and day. Some of the the brands are just truly terrible. Oh, watch out for that. Looks like the coconut was a little excited to get in the pot. So we may add more later depending on for taste and flavor. Always clean up as you go. Makes it much easier on the end. Especially, I hear a lot of stories of uh, people who have to clean up after other people who cook. Um, just be be conscious of the person who's helping you out and try to try to take it easy on them. Again, I um, and then for the red chili, I have some paprika that I wish I had toasted, which is fine. And then I have a little lemon zest. We'll add a little lemon juice later. And these are curry leaves. They really make every curry dish better. Um, they're incredibly hard to find. You can find them in Indian stores sometimes Asian stores back in the produce aisle. Usually they bag them themselves in little Ziploc bags. Oh, what a difference it will make. And now we're going to let the simmer. Probably about two tablespoons of salt. We've added our other spices. Um, we've done some of our aromatics. I didn't have a lot of garum, so I'm going to use a little of the second quality stuff. Again, if uh, you toast it though, it really goes a long way. And that dish is ready to move to the back and we will start on our next dish. All right, so now our second dish is a chicken biryani. Um, in some, in most biryani recipes, you'd use uh, raw chicken and saute it and then add the rice. We're going to use some cooked chicken from roasted chickens. You can get a rotisserie chicken. You can roast your own as we did and just have it. Um, right before we start that though, something very important is to rinse your rice. So we're going to start with two cups of rice and we're going to rinse it a couple times or once just for a longer period of time. You can start to see the water run clear and then it says to soak it. So we're going to soak it just for a moment. Yeah, I had a friend tell me, you don't rinse your rice? And I was like, no, it's just rice. And he's like, do you know where that rice has been? Have you ever seen rice production? And I was like, no, but uh, maybe I don't need to. So we'll just rinse the rice. Um, not always, not all. I don't usually rinse like domestic uh, long grain rice. I think it's super washed, parboiled rice. Obviously, you shouldn't. It's not a bad practice, especially if you're making sushi and stuff. If you don't rinse your rice, it just gets way too sticky. So 
This is all I want. I want the rest of this bird for another application. I'm going to pull the skin off, pull this off, and you can see a, a refrigerated bird just falls right apart. It's so easy to do. And then you can save the carcass again to make a stock. I had some pulled chicken from another one, so we're just going to be done here. I think you should probably soak your rice longer than we're going to soak it, but I think also we're just going to be fine. So if you were going to make basmati rice, you'd go a standard two to one ratio. Two rice, four water, one rice, two water. But if you soak it, you're going to use slightly less. So we're going to use two cups of rice and three and a half cups of water. If you get some skin in there, you don't matter. It doesn't matter. It's really, really good. I'm going to pull some of those things off. I'm just going to shred it slightly and I'm going to feel for bones. Um, something you should always do when you're cooking, cook for your audience. So I like food pretty spicy, but if I'm going to invite someone over, I learned this a long time ago. I had someone who was just mad at me forever. They thought that I was, I did that on purpose, but they didn't eat spicy food. And I was just learning um, some ethnic cuisines. And I think I was making Thai curry that night and I had made my own Thai curry paste. And again, I checked the jalapenos and the uh, serranos I think I was using. This person didn't have spice at all. Cooking as I'd normally cook, I had toasted the chilies and it really brought out the heat. And I really lit this person up. And they were so mad. So to these days, whether you're cooking professionally or you're cooking for friends or family, you're cooking for your grandmother, Cook for your audience. A lot of people won't tell you what they want or how they like it, but you should just make sure that you don't over salt or over spice anything for them. All right, so we're ready to go. We're just gonna turn this on. Same concept. We're gonna start, we're gonna toast these spices whole now because they're gonna be easy to find out of the rice. So it's very similar. I've got some whole dried chilies Got some cinnamon, some bay, star anise, a couple cardamom pods I can you leave whole, and some fennel seeds. I'm gonna get this warmed up. And I also have a little turmeric. A nice chicken biryani may call for a little saffron. It will color the rice and make it more appealing. Um, I don't have any, so I'm gonna use a little turmeric, which is oftentimes in curry um, powder. Check our lamb back here. We don't wanna burn it. Put a lot of effort into it. Oh, it looks so good. We're gonna take our spices, a little bit of oil, and we're just gonna toss those together. This is probably too much chicken for the amount of rice we have, so I'm not gonna use it all. Even at this point, where it sits right now, you could use it for a chicken salad. You could mix some mayonnaise through it, a little sweet chili, and you'd have a nice uh, Indian chicken salad. We'll start with our dry spices and chilies. Instantly, you can smell the difference. You might see the cardamom pop pods pop a little bit like popcorn, you'd know you're done. We only have two cups of rice and four cups of water. So probably about here, if you're looking at this chicken, it's probably quite a bit. They use raw chicken, they saute it with these spices. I feel like this works really well. Also the dark meat holds up better to the boiling process. So let's get some turmeric in there, forgot about that. It doesn't have too much flavor, especially dried powder turmeric, but boy, it can have a big influence on the color you're gonna put in there. Again, you can see some smoke. Mm, you can smell it. Here we go. Put this to the side. Again, this recipe would call for a little bit of yogurt in the rice. This coconut cream that was on top of this coconut milk. We have our soaked rice right here. Have some onions. Probably should have put these in before, but again, we're making rice and we're not making rockets. So if we uh, get a little out of step, it's gonna be just fine. 
toss this around. Well, this is going. We're going to add in our coconut cream in place of our yogurt. You can add the mint now or you can add at the end. I prefer right after the rice is steamed to put it in the end. A little more lemon zest. We're going to juice a lemon. Set that aside. Quick stir. Okay, the rice is starting to stick. The coconut's in there. And now, as I said, we're gonna need three and a half cups of stock. Two. One and a half. Try to get it off the bottom. I'm gonna check my notes real quick and make sure I didn't forget anything. Everything but the mint. Maybe we'll put a little bit in there to season it throughout. We'll just pick some off. Then we'll finish and garnish with a little bit. Again, if you just roll it right up, it's easier to chop. A little mint now, a little mint later. Just like any other rice, we're gonna simmer it. Uh, I used to make this dish in this pan. And what would happen is, the edges around it wouldn't cook all the way. So I just started making it in a straight side pan as I'd make a normal rice, and it came out a lot better. And a little lid, it's boiling. We're gonna turn it down. Probably about a tablespoon of salt. I think it could use another half a tablespoon. Put in another tablespoon probably, so almost two for four cups of stock because the stock isn't salted. Hmm. And we're ready to go. This is gonna take about 30 minutes. Our lamb was probably gonna be another hour and then we'll enjoy this dish. All right, now we're ready to plate up our food. Let's take a look at what we've done here. Here's our biryani. As I'd said, I wish I'd add a little more turmeric. It would have made the rice really yellow, but as it stands, it's just fine. One of the things I'm going to do is, before I fluff the rice, many things floated to the top. A little piece of star anise, a bay leaf, a couple of gingers, whole cardamom pod, and then, always as I said, fluff with a fork. I think I'd like my biryani with a little curry powder in it. I can smell it, it's very aromatic, it smells great, but a little curry powder would have been nice. Fluff all the way to the bottom, we unearth another bay leaf. Okay, let's get this in our bowl. That to the side, grab some of our mint. You can just run it backwards, actually. They usually come right off. Same with basil. We're just gonna rough chop it. A little mint. Cut our lemon in half. And if you don't have a strainer, you just squeeze the lemon with this side facing up. And hopefully, when you're done, all the seeds will be in your hand. Okay, next thing, we have our lamb Rogan Josh. I taste it throughout the process of cooking, so I know it's the salt and the desired tenderness that I wanted. This dish, you could garnish it with a little bit of a fresh tomato. Pick out the curry leaves that you can find. The cinnamon stick looks nice. And I'll grab a quick bunch of cilantro. Always check that your cilantro doesn't have dirt in it. I just put my fingers down in the center. I rub my fingers together. I don't feel any dirt. If you wash it the day ahead, you could shake it out and it will dry in the fridge. 
this chop being wet cilantro um, just clumps it all together. We'll go through a little cilantro and again just a little bit of lemon for that acid. Today we made a nice dairy-free lamb rogan josh, chicken biryani. Uh, we're just going to plate this up real quick, uh, bowl it actually, and then um, get ready to enjoy this. I mean, it's pretty basic. This isn't uh, advanced calculus or anything. We're just going to put some rice on one side and we're going to put some lamb on the other. Here we go. Here you go. Get some of that nice cilantro. Garnish it with a lemon wedge. Every little bit helps. We're going to just get this done. Cut up a couple tomatoes. And there you go. So yeah, let's try it. Mm-hmm. That works. Thanks for joining us.